Hello everyone, my name is Josue, I'm a technician, professor and doctor, and today we're going to talk a little bit more on electrical installation and explosive atmosphere. As we can recall from the last class, to have a certifying equipment, we have to have some requirements to be attained, and one of them is exactly the type of protection. Today we're going to talk about exactly about that. But before we start this, Let's remember last class, the difference between hazardous area classification, which is characterized by fugitive emission, it's a normal operation condition, then leak, an emergent and contingent situation, a loss of control. The hazardous area classification is a normal operation where we have fugitive emissions happening. In another hand, when we have a leakage, it's an emergency and contingent situation. It's a loss of control. There is a huge difference between those two situations. Now forget about that. So, talking about certifier equipment, the first thing that we have to have in mind is that electrical equipment, do its own fictioning, can be source of ignition of some explosive atmosphere. In fact, the source of ignition of this equipment can be caused by its normal on-off, the sparking coming from the on-off, or even a high temperature when it's functioning for a while. So, to understand that and to avoid that to be a source of ignition, we have to build, we have to construct an equipment that could not be a font, a source of ignition. So, Electrical and electronic and equipment, besides being installed, inspected, assembled, and maintenance in a hazardous area classification, it must be constructed, it must be built using some standard. Which standard? A standard that can ensure that this equipment will be not a source of ignition of some explosive atmosphere. The standard 679 of IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission, give that information. In these standards, there is one standard for each type of protection. But what they are, what, what there is this type of protections? There is exactly nine types here. It, that's the most common used for the gas and vapors and hazardous areas classification. The first of them is the flame-proof enclosures or explosion-proof enclosures. That's, that one here, it's, it's very interesting because the first time that I heard about this equipment, I thought wrongly that everything around would explode and then the equipment will be in one piece. That's quite the opposite. This type of protection supports the internal explosions without having connection with the outside and also it, uh, it cools down all the vapors and gases from these explosions from its joints. That's how is the function of this type of protection. The second one here is the increased safety. Uh, they use special measures and constructive materials to assemble this equipment here and they do not produce, of course, a normal operation, what? High temperatures and also non-spark condition, which are both sources of ignitions. This equipment here is very um, handy and very common use because it can be done by plastic, not uh, ordinary plastic, a special plastic. It's not heavy and can be installed in different places. It's a, a very, very useful, a very hand type of protections. Also, we have type N. It's a non sparking. It's a, a, an equipment that have some um, constructions characteristics that uh, permits only installation on zone 2. Remember the first class, we have zone 0, zone 1, and zone 2. Only in zone 2, this equipment can be stalled. Also, we have the intrinsic safe. The intrinsic safe is an equipment that 
works in the field. There is a connection, a cable here, and then there is this uh, uh, the source here, this, uh, this control source where make the ignitions uh, source being less than possible. Rephrasing what I'm talking here. Um, this bridge here uh, controls the energy that goes to the equipment. So we will have their temperature, we will have their sparks, but less, very less, very low than the possible to be ignited. That's why the intrinsic safe is an equipment that can be used, for instance, in zone zero, because it controls all the energy that goes through that equipment. Also, we have the pressurized enclosure. It's a very useful enclosure when we're talking about uh, motors here, because besides the, uh, the protection against the explosive atmosphere, this compressed air a kind of do a cooling, internal cooling system there in that motor here. So it's very, um, how can I say, it's very uh, useful to be safe and also very useful because it extends the lifetime of the equipment once it cools down the functioning of the equipment. Also, we have here the encapsulation. It's used with a special kind of resin that protect all the inside components of this equipment, uh, making that it's almost impossible to have the connection between the external area here and the inside of the equipment, making it protect against explosive atmosphere. Also, we have the powder filling here, of course, we are we are seeing the line of production of this kind of equipment. So it's open. We can see here the sand. Take a look here, there, there. You can see the sand. Of course, it will be closed and then put for working. This sand uh, prevents the entrance of the explosive atmosphere inside of this equipment here. Also, we have the liquid immersion. In past years it was oil immersion, that's why it, it's the code is XEO, but uh, during the, the last couple of years new types of liquid to do this avoidance of explosive atmosphere and the equipment functioning uh, were invented, then they are uh, now called liquid immersion. But take a look here, it's a liquid, so if you put that on a ship for instance and there is some difference of the sea level it's going to lose the protection of the level of this liquid, of this oil. So it's not a very good um, option when we're talking about uh, ships and other places where there is movement. Also, we have the spatial one. That's, that's uh, very interesting. Take a look here in this connection. This connection here. Take a look. It's not an electrical connection. It's a compressed air connection. But it's a lamp. Well, how this lamp will work if there is no wiring here, just air? Well, there is a, a little turbine here connected to a dynamo. This dynamo runs because the turbine, then there is a volt and current regulator that turns up the lamp. So very interesting, very special. And this equipment, once there is not exactly a constructive uh, rules for that, it's an open wide to not avoid the creativity to do new technologies, new kind of equipment, it does not receive a certification on S, but re receive a certification for zone 0, 1, on 2, as we saw in our last class. So, when we talk about certify equipment, we talk about different type of equipment, and we saw here nine different type of equipment to be installed in hazardous area. So, let's talk a little bit more on that, but I would like to use some examples. If I want to drink a little bit of water, yeah, water, take a look. It's a plastic bottle, but let's say that I choose a, a glass bottle or 
a metal bottle. That's exactly what we talk about here today. If you have a hazardous area and you, you have to choose a type of protection, it could be glass, plastic or metal. It could be nine different types of protection. So when we are talking about hazardous area classification, there is no such thing like the best type of protection is that. No, the best type of protection is the one that you need, that is suitable for your industry, that is suitable for your explosive atmosphere, that suitable for the environment surround the place where you have to install this. So as a water bottle that we have three different types of material, glass, plastic, metal, you have here nine different types of protection. So you have to choose one to be installed in your hazardous area classification. It's very important because uh, depending on the place you are, some types of protection will not be suitable to be used on that. So here we saw some different types of protection and next class we are going to talk about temperature class and IP protection. Thanks for today. Hello!